Watch out. Redbow, go on. Let him just take two seconds worth without you. Oh, Chewy! See, he's so not afraid. You can't do much to chase him off. <laughs> okay? Yes. Hi, my name's Jackie Fleming. I live at Watrous, New Mexico, and I run a wild horse sanctuary on 1,100 acres. They don't look very wild. <laughs> Horses that want to eat cameras don't really look like wild mustangs. <laughs> but they've kind of gotten used to me bringing people around, so uh, they know that we're harmless. Um, and actually, some of them think people are pretty darn cool. So, and they came to that conclusion on their own. Nobody train them to like people and I never give them treats. They don't come here because they think I've got sugar lumps or apples. They come because they want to stick their noses in cameras and eat your clothes and <laughs> first I just took in some old horses and some unwanted horses but in 2007 I adopted my first horses from the New Mexico Forest Service wild horses who had been rounded up and needed somewhere to go. And then I kind of got hooked on the wild horses. I'd always kind of been a child that read books about the America's wild Mustangs. And once I brought one of them home, my main focus was on Mustangs after that. And it's not hard to find them. There are 50,000 of them that need homes at the BLM and the adoption fee is only $125. So there's a shortage of home for Mustangs. So if I could and I won the lottery tomorrow, I could have a lot more horses and a lot more land, but you have to control how many you take because I want them to be as natural as possible grazing on the grass and out here in New Mexico with the arid climate, it's very easy to overgraze. So you have to be careful to think of the annual plan, not just the summer plan and hope that there'll be enough pasture for them to graze for the whole year. And so you have to keep the numbers down for that. But otherwise, it would be very easy to have a massive herd of, of Mustangs because they're rounding them up off the wild in their thousands and there's nowhere for them to go. So we really would need more people taking in Mustangs and turning them loose or, or training them and finding them homes. And, um, and so if you want a good mountain horse, I think the Mustangs are the best because no matter what size they are, they've got big, strong legs, big, solid, hard feet. They've got great endurance. They don't need to eat good food to stay healthy. And they're sure-footed. And uh, so, I mean, I, I, would, I would swear by them as a riding horse, not just as running free. If you wanted a really hardy, strong endurance horse, We need to show them some respect, even though the time of the horse has passed as much as we are reliant on them. We shouldn't discard something that has been such an invaluable part of our history and just treat it as common livestock. Many people just think of them as livestock and don't see anything wrong with just trucking them down to Mexico and, and sending them to a slaughterhouse. But I seriously think we owe horses a debt. They have for centuries, I mean the car has only really been around for a hundred years and for centuries before that if we didn't have horses we were stranded in war, in exploration, in farming, in just transportation. We needed horses for everything and uh, you know they used to actually hang horse thieves because <laughs> that's what he thinks, hang horse thieves. <laughs> Um, because it was such a serious crime to, to steal a horse from somebody. I was born in Hong Kong and raised in Singapore, so I didn't have a lot of interaction for the first 10 years of my life around horses. But every time I saw one, it was just like starstruck. There was that instant connection with them. And if there was a chance to ride, I did. And then we moved to England and I took riding lessons. So. It was just one of those things where you bond with the creature and you love the creature immediately. But I would never in my wildest dreams as a child have thought, A, I would be living in the wild west of America, and uh, B, that I would have a herd of uh, wild mustangs. 
uh, running on a thousand acres. If you told me that as a child, I would have thought you were lying to me. <laughs> there was just no way I could think that that was going to happen. But here I am, and dreams can come true. I'm not even sure if it was a concrete dream back then because it seemed like such a fantasy. But I read all those books, My Friend Flicker and Green Grass of Wyoming, and I loved the whole images of horses running in big herds and galloping across the wide open spaces. Um, they are, they are a symbol of freedom, which is so ironic considering most of them aren't free at all. But you know, they are used as a symbol of freedom. And there's just something about seeing a wild horse at liberty, it makes you feel that sense of freedom inside. I actually get a kick out of just coming out here and lying in the grass and having them all around me and it's got nothing to do with utilizing them or riding them or, or competing on them or any of that. I just love their company. I love to be around them and uh, they're very soulful creatures and you can have a connection with them without doing anything. You don't have to speak to a horse. You don't have to... <laughs> Now you got two of them. 